So we've talked about the challenges of getting enough signal, which you need big dishes and um, with, or finding a nice clean yep. bandwidth where you can actually send the signals without being jammed by other things nearby. But there's another issue, which is this earth we're standing on. It just gets in the way, right? It really does. I mean, it's great that we have the earth. Obviously, we wouldn't be here. But if you want to look everywhere in space, we can't look through the earth with radio waves, right, Paul? That's right. The Earth um, is just as opaque at radio waves as it is with every other sort of wave. <laughs> That's right. So radio waves don't have this invisible technique of just being able to see it, which means if we want to monitor space or if we want to monitor our satellite, we pretty much need things all around the world. And this is going to depend what sort of orbit we're talking that's right. about. So if we're talking about something that's way out in space, like at Mars or Pluto or something like that, then uh, basically it's, we're going to need at least two stations on opposite sides of the Earth. Yes, so that's right. When it rises from one, it sets on the other. If it's something in low Earth orbit, like a, um, a spy satellite or something like this, it's going to be going around very fast. That's right. And you can't see it from that far away. Exactly. You can't see it from that far away, and you can't download data for that long. If it's going around every 90 minutes, at best, it's maybe overhead every 30 minutes in the yes. best case scenario. So you have to quickly grab as much data, which is a lot less than the amount of data it's being produced. Yes, I remember the, the very first American astronauts, uh, the uh, Mercury program, yep. they'd be launched and they'd cut over Australia and they'd have to have a whole bunch of ground stations all the way along. There's some of them would be on ships, some of them would just be a hut with an antenna. Spacecraft wasn't very far up, it was only yep. like a few hundred kilometres up, so you didn't need a huge dish, you could just have an antenna on a pole at the right frequency. But you needed a lot of them, because if it's, say, over outback Australia, you're not going to pick it up from Canberra. That's right. And in fact, this is still what NASA and everyone does today. They have these networks of dishes. Now the technology is a little bit more advanced, but you still have to put them evenly around the Earth. You can't say, hey, we're just going to all stick them in America because, well, when you're over Australia, either your astronaut, what if your astronaut has a problem? There will be no one to listen to. Yes, so you by and large need line of sight. Yes. I mean, some radio waves can go around the Earth, the very low frequency ones, because they bounce off the ionosphere, but they're not very good for getting into space exactly. for that very reason. So any wavelength that can get out of the atmosphere, you need line of sight. If you can't point straight at your spacecraft, you can't send a signal there and you can't receive a signal from it. That's right. Now, you also said there was another important aspect, and that is where the satellite is in space. And so, as we've kind of talked about earlier in the course, we have our low Earth satellite. So those are where most of our satellites are, a couple of hundred kilometers, not that far away. Yep. But as you get out to geosynchronous orbit, you're over 30,000 kilometers away. So there's a big difference between 400 kilometers and 30,000 kilometers. Yes. So you had something in a very low Earth orbit, like this black line here. You see just having three ground stations is not going to be enough because they can't observe all the way to the horizon. Exactly. They have to, have, I mean, the dishes tend to fall over when you do that, and also there are mountains <laughs> in the way, but there's also too much atmosphere and too much interference. Exactly. So you're restricted to being probably uh, 10 or so degrees above the horizon, and that means from, say, Canberra, you can see this part of space. Um, NASA, as you probably talked about in your visit, yep. um, has the three deep space communication exactly. centers, one in California, one outside Madrid in Spain, and one in Can Canberra. And for lower thought, they're not very useful because only a very small fraction of the time you're going to access it. You need more stations with small additions if it's something that's a low Earth orbit. Exactly. By the time it's out in a geostationary orbit, um, it doesn't really, three stations is probably good enough. You that's right, or the Moon or Mars is much further. Now you said you still need a couple because the planet or the object is still going to rise and, and set on the horizon. So you still need a few, and that's kind of why they've settled on three. It's that right number and that right balance between still being able to build and operate all these things and see enough. But if you were to focus on all of these lower satellites, our communications, internet, whatever you call it, you're going to have these massive gaps. In fact, you're downloading data less than when you actually can. Now, for some of these things, you could just, uh, like a lot of the Earth observation satellites, they would just have, say, one or two stations yep. that control them. And what would happen is that they would upload commands as it flies over that station and then say, OK, go and take photos when you're over. Uzbekistan, whatever yep. it might be, and then when it comes back around next time, you download the data from Uzbekistan and upload more instructions. That's right. So often they, um, you can get away with just one, but that limits how much data you can download, and it also limits how rapidly you can respond. Let's say you suddenly decide you actually want to 
observe somewhere else because something interesting is happening there. Uh, you have to wait till your spacecraft comes around and, and tell it where to look for. And that's right. And so this is why people use these combinations of networks. So if you imagine every little circle is a point we need to communicate or observe, either up to Earth or coming back down, well, you'll have some that are at these geosynchronous orbits, which, OK, fine, they're always there. You have the, the middle ones at low Earth orbit as well. So in fact, you want to build multiple receivers, multiple telescopes of different sizes, in particular also in places that have less people and less interference near the horizon, so you can maximize your time you can download. And historically, as you said, not a big deal if you have only one or two satellites, but now that we have thousands and thousands of satellites, you proportionately need more and more things to download that data. So what you'd do now is you'd, if you want to talk to a satellite that's not right overhead, you'd probably use a relay of other satellites. That's right. So for a while you use the geostationary ones which are up high, and so if you, have, you want to, you're over here and you want to pick up a signal from something over there, you get it to send the signal up to the geostationary satellite and then back down to you. Nowadays it might be more like a sort of game of pass the parcel where that's there's right. s s constellations of low Earth orbit satellites that you want to pass the data to the next one, and then relay it on to the next one, and that of course relies on the computer power we have now. Exactly. And so there's this, again, there's just this finer point of being able to build the capability and the way you can relay this data on the satellite and the way you can do it on the ground. And, and yes, building a bunch of radio receivers on Earth may not be as exciting, but if you don't have enough to get that data down, it's kind of like taking a whole bunch of pictures on your phone and saying, great, I enjoyed that holiday, and then just leaving your phone. Yes. You never see them again.